crowd of angry men with stones in their hands throws a frightened woman at Jesus' feet. What about her, Jesus, they said. We just caught her in the act of adultery. The law commands us to stone her. The men shout for her death. And then Jesus invites the one among them without sin to throw the first stone, reminding the men that it takes two to commit adultery, reminding the men that they themselves are not innocent. So they dropped those stones and they walked away. Those stones may be deep beneath the earth by now, friends, but they still shout. A large stone covered the entrance to a cave. Inside is a man who had been dead for four days. There is weeping. There is mourning. A voice commands them to take the stone away. And so they move the stone, and that same voice cries out, Lazarus, come forth. And the tears of mourning turned to tears of joy. Frowns and sadness were suddenly wonder and gratitude and awe as Lazarus walked alive out of the cave. That stone still shouts. And there is another stone, friends, that shouts across time. It also covered a sealed tomb, a tomb now and forever empty. And that stone shouts the new story of new life, of resurrection, of new hope. It shouts the good news proclaimed by our Lord, and it shouts still. The stones we cling to when life's winds blow in and change everything. When we, like Jacob, are alone and lost. When we, like the Israelites in the desert, are dying of thirst. When we, like the woman caught in the act of adultery, are facing the scorn of others. When we, like the crowd outside Lazarus too, witness tragedy and death. Those stones of our faith still shout out. We stand on the rock, and that rock shouts out, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. May it be so for you, friend. May it be so for me.